Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm wearing an orange beanie, and we're gonna be talking about a transition that you can do and set up so fast and so good, so easy. So before you spend 50 bucks or 100 bucks on a transition pack, give this video a watch and see if you can't do this yourself. Insane, it's an insane transition. Now this transition is actually super nice because it's fully customizable. It takes one node and it's yours forever or free. So let's get started. I have two clips here from a recent video that I edited. One is a talking head intro. Peace. And then the next is part of the gameplay that it's cutting to. And so what I'd like to do is transition from side A to side B. Go up top, go to the effects tab, click that, and we're looking for our adjustment layer, which is going to be the effects column, adjustment layer. Now you can go ahead and adjust your adjustment layer to be however long you would like it to be for your transition. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit shift and left on the keyboard to go one second to the left, go back to the middle, hold shift, and hit right on my keyboard to go one second to the right and bring it in. So this technically is a two second transition. I'm probably not gonna make it two seconds long, but it's a, it's a good starting point. So once you have your adjustment clip selected, I'm gonna actually hit M to add a marker and this is gonna indicate our transition point. This is the center point of the transition and it's gonna be useful later on. Once you've done that, go down to the bottom and let's go into the fusion page. Now, if I go up top and make this single view until instead of double view, you'll see that if I go to the left, I have our first clip. And if I go to the right, we have our second clip. Quick interruption. I've got to show how you add a node in your fusion page. If you hold down control and space, that'll bring up your, your node menu, your tool menu. You can start typing in the tool that you want. So I'm looking for the transform node with XF and then I can go ahead and add that. Back to the video. And the only node we are going to use today is a transform node. And you want the one with the little XF next to it. Go ahead and add that and then drag and drop it in holding down the shift key. I'm gonna add a keyframe to our center position here. I'm gonna go one frame to the left so that we're on the first clip and keyframe that position as well. So now we have the end of our first clip and the beginning of our second clip keyframed. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go either forward or backwards as many frames as I'd like our transition to be. So I would like this to be a pretty quick transition. So I'm just gonna go eight frames to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, keyframe. And now I'm gonna jump forward eight frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Okay, so now let's jump to the midpoints of our transition. And you can do this in whatever direction you would like. I'm gonna go ahead and set the center point for the end of our first clip to zero. And now I'm gonna go one frame forward and I'm gonna set the X center position to one. Okay, and now if I drag this through, this is what it looks like. And that's gonna be the beginning of what our transition looks like. The next thing I'm gonna do is go over to the edges setting and I'm gonna select mirror. So now when I go to drag this left to right, this will give the transition the effect of wrapping towards the next clip. Now there's gonna be two things we do to really sell this transition. First is gonna be go to your settings and turn on motion blur. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the quality to like eight, maybe decrease, well, maybe decrease the shutter angle a little bit. Now we have something that looks like this. So you're starting to see that, that whip effect. So if I play this all the way through, this is what it's gonna look like. In the next one. Peace. The last thing that we're gonna do to make this look really smooth is I'm gonna go up top to my spline options, check on displacement. Um, I'm gonna hit this little arrow here to expand it so that it fits my entire screen. Control A selects everything and then S adds a spline to all of our keyframe points. What I'm gonna do is adjust our handles so that we have some nice ease in and ease outs of the transition. So when I go to play it, it's gonna look something like this. Peace. Which looks pretty good. It's pretty quick. Say for instance, I, I feel like that's too fast and you wanna adjust the size of your transition. All you gotta do is again, hit Control A and then on your spline tools down here at the bottom, you're looking for these two bars with arrows on the side and it's your time stretch options. And what this will do is it'll maintain the relationship of the keyframes while expanding the starting and end points of them. So if I wanted to, I could simply drag out the end point, a couple frames, and then drag out the beginning point. 
a couple frames. So now this is what that would look like in the next one. Peace. Ours is set up to go from right to left, but you can go left to right, up to down, zoom in, zoom out, spin around. You can basically set up and customize this transition to operate however you would like to operate it. And before you click off the video, let me show you how to save it so that you never have to set it up again. Don't, don't you click off. Give me two more seconds. Now that I have our transition set up the way I would like it. Peace. If I want to use this in a future project, make sure that your power bins are on. These are going to be crucial. Power bins are basically folders set up to be shared across any project. And it's going to show over here on the left column in DaVinci. I've already got a couple folders set up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my whips folder and you can see I've already made a whip transition that I use and it's an eight frame transition. If I drag this guy into that folder and let's name it new super whip transition. Now, if later on in the video, I find a point where I need to transition again, I can drop this guy down, find the midpoint. Unfortunately, I wish the markers would carry over so that I didn't have to like remark it. And there we go. Hopefully you guys found this video useful. And if you did, can you please hit like at least 1 million times? I appreciate y'all. Peace.